Shall income and adjustments to income part one where the schedule c rolls into line three business income or loss from the schedule c here is finally the schedule c profit or loss from business which has a p l profit and loss or income statement format income minus expenses so now we're talking about excise taxes remember and keeping all these taxes straight in our mind the federal uh, system for us to be funding what the federal government does which should be protecting us the military primarily we have an income tax the primary system but we also talked about some other federal taxes which are often categorized as payroll taxes social security and medicare but when we're sole proprietors on a schedule c we have to deal with them with regards to self-employment tax now we also could have state taxes remembering that the state taxes might tax on however the states want to because states should have the sovereignty to pay for the things that they're supposed to deal with not the military but like the police uh, for example so they might have an income tax on the state side and the local side you might have income taxes you might have sales taxes you might have real estate taxes and that kind of thing then we could also have the excise taxes which you could see basically on either level the federal level or the state level which could be directed more specifically towards particular industries so they're going to be there for a particular goal typically in a particular industry the most common example is probably going to be like taxes on gasoline the idea there being that the roads that are put in place because they're in between states because it's interstate commerce that's why the federal government kind of encroached on the state side of things in order to build freeways and whatnot which are going to go through different states and so on the roads are for everyone the roads are basically free generally however they we have to pay for that some people get more benefit from the roads than other people some people they don't go on the road at all but they still benefit from it because they get deliveries and whatnot from people who do use the roads but even then they still use the roads far less than some businesses who could possibly make their entire revenue by using the roads if you're a trucking company for example then clearly you're you're using the roads and making a profit on the infrastructure of the roads more over and above than like somebody else who doesn't use the roads at all but does get some deliveries from the roads and and that kind of thing so the idea would be well if we tax gasoline which is necessary to drive on the roads that means that the people that use the roads more are the people that are going to be taxed more and we can use those proceeds to then uh, fix the roads and in that way you're trying to allocate the cost of upkeep of the road to the people that are getting more benefit from the road so that kind of makes sense you also get on the excise tax of things side of things things that are that uh, possibly i'm not as in agreement with which are things to try to curb people's behavior in um, what i feel like is a manipulative way so they might say that we're going to give a tax on say uh alcohol and cigarettes and uh, tobacco for example and the justification usually there is not so that we can get money to fund whatever we need to do like the roads or the military or the police it's a punitive thing the whole reason for the tax is to try to get people to stop using alcohol tobacco or whatever by basically uh hitting them with the tax which will inf- will which will decrease the behavior due to ec- economics meaning if it costs more they're going to do less of that that seems one a little bit manipulative to to me and two uh it also seems like it's hitting the people that are lower income it seems like a regressive tax oftentimes because the people that are indulging in these things are people that might have rougher times rougher jobs and so on and they're dealing with it with alcohol and tobacco and whatnot and now you're hitting them with a tax on that stuff so i'm not sure if that and three those things are addictive so the question is if you're dealing with something that is addictive does it really change uh, people's behavior if you increase the price of it because it's inelastic right so really you're just increasing it and you're collecting tax revenue from people that are addicted to these to these kind of things 
So, but there's there's the argument for that. You could you can make your argument on either side of that case. So, but that's the other. And you can imagine if they start doing that kind of thing, that it could they could take that. This is number four reason why I don't like it. There's a slippery slope. Once the government gets their finger in a taxation area, they won't let it go, right? So you have these examples where people wanted to tax like uh, large soda pops or something like a big gulp because they're trying to change people's behaviors to have them not drink sugary drinks and this kind of thing, which again, doesn't seem to me to be the way to, to teach people. You're trying to train the, the public to be smart and do things because they decided to do it. Their own choice is important to manipulate people to do a decision, even if it's more healthy, I don't think is beneficial in the long run to me. But in any case, major example. So, so this section uh, identifies some of the excise taxes you may have to pay and the forms you may have to file if you do any of the following. So manufacture or sell certain products. So operate certain kind of businesses, use various kinds of equipment, facilities, or products, receive payment for certain services. So for more information on excise taxes, you can see publication 510 excise taxes. Now we're not going to spend a whole lot of time here because again, these are industry specific things. So if you're in a particular industry, you're probably very aware of the excise taxes. Uh, if you're not, then the excise taxes might not be bothering you much, right? So Form 720, the federal excise tax reported on Form 720, quarterly federal excise tax return consists of several broad categories of taxes, including the following. So you've got the environmental taxes on the sale or use of own zone depleting chemicals and imported products containing or manufactured with these chemicals. So you might recall that before we had the crisis for like uh, the, the global warming thing, which basically they're going after uh, carbon and the uh, carbon dioxide, I believe is the primary greenhouse gas that they're trying to figure out how that we can uh, reduce. We had the ozone thing before that where the ozone layer and a lot of spray cans and stuff had this ozone stuff in it. And basically they made laws uh, to reduce those types of chemicals. Now, to my, to my knowledge, I'm not really sure it was the laws that really stopped us. We did kind of make vast improvements on these types of things. But to me, I, it seemed like we, what they did is they made the public aware of this problem. And I think then capitalism, I feel like is the thing that really drove the changes because they found out better ways to do spray bottles and whatnot without these chemicals, which is what people desired and possibly was even cheaper in the long run.